and welcome to Game Sack. This time we're talking about good games that are based on TV and movie franchises. That's right. And you may remember four years ago we did an episode, uh, I think it was episode 116, called Games Based on Movies. Now, of course, we're not going to talk about those games since we've already talked about them. And these are going to be completely different. You're not going to see GoldenEye since we've already covered that. So... You know, if you're going to turn it off, turn it off, sorry. But you're going to miss some good games, so don't actually turn it off. we got some great games here for you. We do, we do. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let's check out Goof Troop on the Super Nintendo. Goof Troop was originally a Disney cartoon that came out in 1992. I'll be honest and say that I never really watched it being that it came out when I was 20 years old. At that point, I had pretty much grown out of cartoons except for the ones that I liked when I was younger. But I had nieces and nephews who were around 8 years old that really liked it so I'd watch the occasional episode. It was in 1993 that Capcom released the Super Nintendo game. Capcom and Disney in the late 80s and early 90s made some seriously awesome games and this just happens to be one of them. So yeah, Capcom went in a different direction with this title. As you know, they loved to make platforming games back then, but this time they went with more of an action puzzle type of game. In the beginning, you can choose to play a multiplayer game with one person controlling Goofy while the other controls Max or vice versa. Luckily for a guy like me who has no real friends, you can play a single player game choosing either of the protagonists to play as. The goal of each level is to make your way to the end while solving puzzles along the way. These puzzles mainly consist of you pushing blocks onto a square shaped pattern with a star in it. They're fairly easy at first and are really fun to figure out. But as you make your way into upper levels, they do get a lot tougher, which is great. And you'll need to be prepared to sit and stare at a puzzle for a long time before you can even make a move. Oh, and to make it even tougher, you can't pull a block away from the wall. There's many times you'll exit the room and re-enter just to reset the damn things. In single player, your character can hold two items at a time that will help you out along the way. There's a grappling hook that will stun enemies for a very short time. You can also use it to grab items and to make a rope bridge at certain spots for you to cross. There's a shovel that can, well, you know what shovels do, they dig things. This one is weird since you can only dig when you're facing sideways. Can you imagine if you could only dig in real life when you're facing east or west? That's just goofy. The strangest one though is a bell that you can use to get the attention of your enemies. I don't like this one, but I'm going to use it here so you can just see how stupid it is. The best and most fun thing to do is catching barrels and whatnot that your enemies throw at you. It's pretty satisfying just to throw these things right back at them. The game has lots of good looking backgrounds with lots of variety in them. The music is actually pretty good too. Capcom usually likes a lot of reverb in their Super Nintendo games, but this one isn't bad. And here's a secret that you probably already know. Shinji Mikami, the director of Resident Evil, designed this game. Sometimes you might even think you're playing Resident Evil. <laughs> Just kidding, that's stupid. But anyway, go out and find yourself a copy of this game, it's great fun. Here's Blazing Dragons on the Sony PlayStation from Crystal Dynamics. It's also available for the mighty Sega Saturn. Now, Blazing Dragons was originally an animated TV show in Canada created by Terry Jones of Monty Python fame. Some episodes did air in the United States, but evidently they were toned down quite a bit. But we're here to talk about the game. It's a point-and-click adventure where you play as Flicker, a dragon trying to become a squire and then a knight so he can get with Princess Flame. In the world of Blazing Dragons, the humans are evil and the dragons are good. And in this particular story, the humans are trying to enter a contest held by the King Dragon and win it so they can rule over everything. However, only dragons can enter the contest, but they're cheating by creating their own mechanical dragon. I tell you, these guys are up to no good. This is true evil if I've ever seen it. Your adventure includes stopping the humans, of course, but you've got a lot of other things on your mind, mainly getting with the princess. I just became a squire flame. The game plays like most other point-and-click games of the era. You have an icon that you move about the screen, and you can change that icon by pressing L1 or R1. Different icons do different things like looking at an item, talking to someone, picking something up, walking somewhere, and so on. You have a bag which stores all of the various items that you pick up. You'll need to use each and every one of these at some point in your adventure. Now it's not always clear what you need to do, but try every item on everything in a scene if you get stuck. You can even combine items to create new ones in certain cases. Again, it's not always clear what you need to do, but just mess around and you'll figure it out. 
you'll be going all over the map to discover what's going on and how to advance. You usually know what you need to do, you just need to figure out how to do it. That ant must have a weight problem if he sprung this trap. The humor in this game is pretty good. This same day, Carrier Eagle. We'll get the plans there, lickety split. Curse you, stupid bird! Oh well, at least I have my backup ground delivery dodo. For example, at one point you need to follow a dodo bird in order to find the kidnapped Princess Flame. But the dodo bird is trapped by a hunter and can't advance. So what you need to do is make hunting dodos illegal, which you have absolutely no authority to do. And of course, this instantly places the hunter under arrest. But at least now you can follow the dodo bird. Or at another point, you're trying to pretend that you're Sir George, who's the main bad guy, by wearing a mask of him. But his blind servant doesn't believe you because you don't smell bad enough. So you go out, dip the Sir George mask into some manure, and try again. Success. The game is mostly point and click, but there are some mini games that you'll have to partake in. Can I have some useless information? Like slinging a cat on the catapult to knock down the cardboard cutouts of human knights. Or even a dance competition, which is actually pretty easy. Pretty much every line of dialogue in the game is voiced. I say pretty much because sometimes the game forgets to play a voice sample or two. But the voice cast does a great job and is voiced by Terry Jones, Cheech Marin, and a bunch of other people. When my entry in your tournament, the Black Dragon wins and is crowned king, he will turn your hide into ladies' handbags and tight shoes. Occasionally, they'll do some impersonations like of Arnold. You want funny papers? Dance me for them on stage, girly dragon. Or hell, even Rodney Dangerfield. Huh, I'm gonna throw the book at you, and my aim's better than yours. I'm what I tell you wild. Definitely random, but entertaining. The graphics are really well done with nicely colored backdrops that look very natural and well drawn. The animation is also quite good too. In fact, it looks entirely different from the TV show. Personally, I'm gonna say that the change here is actually welcome. Overall, this is a game that's fairly easy to play and navigate. It isn't overly long and it has a cheeky sense of humor. And from what I've seen, this is way better than the cartoon itself. Check it out. The magical home of the Lady of the Lake. Look, something magical's happening. Oh, what are the chances? I got you now, fish lady. Speedy, quick! Ugh, let me go! You brute. Dude, that Blazing Dragons game looks actually really fun, and since it has your seal of approval, I think I might just have to pick it up, because I like point and click adventures. I would not put my seal of approval on a game that was bad. Okay, there you have it, right there. Well, let's get back into more games. Here's Transformers Devastation on the PlayStation 4. It's also available for the PC, the Xbox One, and even the PS3 and Xbox 360. Now, I might be cheating a little with this one. Is it based on the toy or the TV show? I mean, the TV show is based on the toy, so does it really count for this episode? Well, since the characters in the game here look like the ones in the TV show and are voiced by many of the same actors who did the voices in the original TV show, I'm gonna give it a pass. As a lifelong fan of the Transformers, this is the game that I've always wanted. You can choose to play as one of five different Autobots to battle the evil Decepticons. It's developed by Platinum Games, who've created plenty of other great action titles like Bayonetta and Vanquish. It has many of their usual tropes here, which I'll get to in a bit. But right away, they took great pains to make this game look as much like the Generation 1 Transformers cartoon as they could, and they exceeded my expectations in most areas. The game is given a cel-shaded look, which of course works perfectly. The characters themselves all look really nice and fairly faithful. There are some differences though. For example, Bumblebee doesn't transform into a VW bug anymore, probably due to licensing reasons. It's okay, I can live with that. And of course, Megatron now transforms into a tank. I really don't like that at all, but honestly, I can understand why Hasbro doesn't want him transforming into a realistic looking gun anymore. But at least he looks the same as always in robot mode. The gameplay consists mainly of running around large areas, getting into battles, gathering items, and proceeding to the next area of the stage. Since it's Platinum Games, the action is really well done and quite fun. As you'd expect, if you dodge at the last second, everything slows down, giving you a nice window to attack. I love this and it feels really good to do. You can forge and upgrade your weapons, which helps make the combat more enjoyable. 
And again, since it's platinum, you know that repetition is gonna be a pretty big thing here. And it is. Same with long boss fights. Also, sometimes things get entirely confusing as the screen fills with chaos. Or the entire situation is confusing and you're not sure what to do or where the enemy is. And I do wish some of the stages were smaller because it seems to take forever to get out of the first city, for example. None of these issues are in any way game breaking though, and you'll likely figure them out and still have fun. They're just minor gripes. Detonation imminent. Like I said, the characters look good, but the backgrounds really only look okay. There's plenty of pop-up when the game tries to draw distances further than the unlimited power of the PS4 is capable of. Sadly, this game is not PS4 Pro or Xbox One X enhanced. The music is energetic and often really, really good, but a few of the earlier tunes feel perhaps a bit repetitive, and their overuse does no favors to the repetition of the gameplay. Many members of the original voice cast return. The humans are evacuated and our mission is clear. Save the city and stop Megatron. Not all of them, but a lot. Oh, Prime! You have no idea what you're really up against, do you? Who is really behind this? Some voice actors really wanted to return, but they were too busy being dead. Other voice actors were still alive, but just not invited, so their characters were done by impersonators. Welcome to Cybertron. All in all, I'd say that this is really a treat all around for any Transformers fan, and even if you're not, it's still a fun game. The story is nonsensical, but that's okay. Its location is highlighted on your map. Grimlock, almost there! There's a lot going on here, and this game will keep you busy for just long enough. Definitely recommend it. This is new Ghostbusters 2 for the NES. Now hold on, don't worry, I'm not going to talk about the Activision version of Ghostbusters 2 because that's not a fun game. I'm going to talk about something that was never released in the USA and that's HAL's new Ghostbusters 2. HAL is awesome. They make some really cool stuff and this game isn't any different. At the player select screen you can choose to play as two of the four Ghostbusters or you can even pick the accountant Louis Tolley. It's really cool that they included him even though I decided to pick somebody else. Controlling your Ghostbusters is a lot easier than you think. They follow each other around just like in an RPG. One controls the proton beam while the other controls the trap. Once you get a ghost caught in a proton beam, the guy holding the trap automatically moves into position and with the push of a button he traps the ghost. And keep in mind that the Ghostbuster with a proton beam can move around. This can come in handy if you have a ghost trapped and need to move out of the way of another ghost in your space. I like the fact that you can trap ghosts through walls. Sometimes it doesn't work if your partner can't lay down the trap, but for the most part it does work. Your characters mostly control well. The only thing I found annoying is that some objects in a room, like a chair that's fallen over, need to be skirted around. Why can't I just walk over it? Getting hung up on a little thing like that could mean the death of your Ghostbuster. Which brings up another point. Your Proton Pack character is the only one that can die. The guy with the trap will never die. This is a good thing since you only have to worry about the positioning of one character. So the game follows the movie close enough. There's no cutscenes or dialogue or anything like that, but the locales that you bust your ghosts in are straight from the movie. You've got the courthouse, the abandoned underground subway tunnels, and even the river of slime. Yeah, they don't look exactly like the movie, but use a little imagination. Overall, the levels are pretty short. And the thing is, you'll go back and forth to the same rooms a couple of times before the boss door opens up. The ghost busting is fun enough that you don't mind seeing the same areas a couple of times. The boss fights aren't horribly difficult. They don't have life bars or any of that jazz, all you have to do is trap them. Most of them go pretty quickly and their patterns aren't so tough that you can't figure it out. The music is interesting, but I don't hear any melodies from the movie. Granted, I don't have the movie score memorized, but what I hear in the game doesn't sound like it. Still, it doesn't bother me since it's kinda catchy. Believe it or not, I've always liked Ghostbusters 2 the movie, and the game does justice to the franchise.
Follow GameSack on Twitter at GameSack and at GameSack Dave on Instagram at GameSack Official and check out our Patreon if you want. Ah, it's too bad we didn't get new Ghostbusters too. But Ghostbusters on the Genesis was still the first good Ghostbusters game because this came, actually came out after. Yeah, and that's very true. It is a shame that we didn't get that because I really like how they've got Vinkman's even hairline up there. It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of cool, I've got a really good game to start off this last segment with. Ooh, let's check it out. Here's The Warriors, based on the 1979 movie of the same name. Depending on your age, you may or may not have seen this one. It's all about the Warriors gang who have to fight their way back to Coney Island after being framed for killing Cyrus, the leader of the Rifts who is trying to unite all the gangs of New York into one huge gang. It's a great movie, and if you haven't seen it, you better watch it after you enjoy the rest of this episode. Rockstar developed the game version, and honestly, I can't think of a better company that I'd want to handle it. This game starts out before the movie, but includes that part too. You'll play as various members of the gang as you progress through the storyline. Instead of an open world setting like Grand Theft Auto, everything you do is initiated at the gang's hideout. From this area, you can do lots of different things like progress the story by starting the next level. You can also play flashback levels. These are cool since they give some background to things like how the Warriors gang started. Plus, they'll open up new missions and other items inside the story mode. And if you want to know how you're doing, you can also check your stats here. The story mode will have you doing lots of different things besides just straight up fighting. But you'll be doing tons of fighting, so don't worry if you think there won't be enough. Fighting is fun. There's a ton of different moves that you can do if you want to take the time to learn them all. You can even enter a rage mode if you build up the rage meter by doing combos and stylish fighting. It makes you really strong for a short period of time. I don't know if it's just my amazing video game skills or what, but I found it really hard to die in this game. I got beat up pretty good a lot of times and should have died, but I survived. Like when I was fighting the Baseball Furies. They mobbed me and my boys and were pretty relentless, but I never died. Which leads me to another point. In this mission, I had to get to this subway, which was on the other side of the Fury's baseball diamond. I figured that I'd have to beat them all up to make it out, but that wasn't the case. Instead of putting up a fight, I could have just ran straight by them and went to the subway. A lot of missions feel like you can bypass the action and just get to the next area with no problem. Still, the game is fun, and while you're in a level, you do have some freedom to do stuff like break into stores and steal cash and goods. Or you can break into cars to steal stereos. One mission has you spray painting your tag all over another gang's tag. This is the only mission I found to be really annoying. The actual spray painting is easy, but you can only hold one can of spray paint at a time and it runs out after every tag. How am I supposed to write with no spray? Jeez. You then need to buy another can from some dude who is luckily close by selling paint, and of course it's the color you need. So you have to tag and then buy paint like 10 times. You also run into money problems and need to mug somebody in order to buy more paint. It felt very tedious and I thought, why can't I just beat up the dude selling paint and steal it all from him? I guess gang members have problems too though, huh? Other than that, the game is really fun and has all the gangs from the movie and it's great fun to get into fights with them. It's very well made and I had no problems with controls or wondering what I need to do next. Everything from the music to the gritty graphics that look like bad parts of New York really made me feel like all of this could have been in the movie. And that's not surprising since most of the movie actors return to voice their characters in the game. Look, you girls can stand out here all night deciding if you're gonna go a pair of balls. I'm going in there. And if it matters to you, the Xbox version is displayed in widescreen at 720p, while the PS2 version is 480i. Either way, you can't go wrong with this game as it's really fun. So for the final game today, I figured I could cover South Park The Stick of Truth on the PlayStation 3. I've had this probably for nearly two years now. I got it for really cheap, but it's still sealed. I've never played it. I figured this would be a great chance to cover it. But nope. Instead, I figured I could cover South Park, the fractured butthole on the PlayStation 4. 
It's also on the Xbox One, Switch, and the PC. It's currently more expensive on the Switch though for some reason. The game looks just like you're playing the cartoon, which is no surprise given the power of the PS4, which is beyond unlimited. Believe it or not, it kind of plays like an RPG. You play as the new kid who you get to design at the start of the game. You start out doing what I assume is the same stuff that you did in Stick of Truth as it seems to pick up the day after that game. Man, the weekends are crazy in South Park. But it quickly switches over to a superhero motif and now you're looking for this cute little lost kitty cat. I mean, that's what superheroes do. But there's lots of other stuff you'll need to do in the meantime, like gain followers on social media and take lots and lots of selfies. Of course, there are lots of battles and it uses a grid system similar to a lot of strategy RPGs, only a touch crappier. You have many different moves that you and your party can do that are decided with different buttons and you can see the range for your attacks. You sometimes have to wait for certain moves to recharge. It's easy to get to hang of, but it's kind of clumsy sometimes. I mean, it's not too bad. It's, it's good, but it's just, yeah. They're usually pretty funny until you start hearing the same retorts from the enemies again and again. Nothing else beating on you guys is really therapeutic for me. In typical Ubisoft fashion, the game is slightly over-designed. Hints will keep popping up throughout the game because Ubisoft knows that you're not going to figure out how to do anything unless they explicitly tell you. It's actually not that bad, and I'll take hints over a tutorial any day. But there is a lot to remember, and your phone is populated with a ton of stuff to worry about. Honestly though, I mostly just ignored all that, and I seem to do pretty well, so it's nothing that brings the game down too much. You can wander around people's houses and take things that'll be useful in battle, like things to heal and whatnot. Other things can be used to craft new items or enhance your costume, which affects your battle abilities. I love looking around the homes, finding weird ass things. The humor is, of course, 100% South Park, with tons of references to the show and also real life. If you're easily offended and think everything should be politically correct, well then be careful because this game will absolutely end you. It's full of uncensored naughty words which will corrupt society and also your soul. You won't be laughing like crazy from beginning to end, but you'll laugh often enough, or at least you'll be mildly amused. Ah, there you are, butthole. Being a superhero is a little harder than you thought, huh? As I mentioned, the game looks like you're playing the show. Hell, I'd say it even looks better because there's no way a compressed Comedy Central broadcast looks this clean. This is enhanced for the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X to run in glorious native 4K at 60 frames per second. Did you ever think that such power would ever be possible? I mean, look at this! Oh my god! The voice acting is exactly what you'd expect and the sound quality is good. Cute PJs, kid. If you see Butters, could you tell him he's grounded again? The music is fine, it's not spectacular and it's not bothersome, but sometimes it tries to be epic. And I'm just kind of getting sick of all this epic music and shows and games and it just it stresses you out. Everything doesn't need to be epic. Oh, and the previous game, The Stick of Truth, is also included. So that's cool, but you have to download it. I mean, at five and a half gigabytes, there's just no way it could ever fit on the same disc with Fractured Butthole as it's already on a dual layer Blu-ray with close to 17 gigabytes of free space. That's just unreasonable. Oh well, Fractured Butthole is fun and it really represents the show well. And now it's at a good price brand new, at least the PS4 and the Xbox One versions. This is so much better than the other South Park games. We can finish this up soon. The fractured butthole. Now, when I say that, what image comes to your mind? It's not the what's on the cover. Butthole, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's an interesting title to an interesting game for sure. Uh, the Warriors is awesome. Yes. Uh, you definitely need to watch that movie if you haven't. It's seen actually it. pretty good. It's I, a good movie. Hard to believe it's from 1979. I know, and so. based off a book that was like 10 years earlier, which I haven't read, and I do want to read that. So Yeah. Anyway, what are some more movie and TV show games that you'd recommend that are actually good? Let us know, and also, next episode, we're going to look at some that are pretty bad. So stay tuned, and thank you for watching GameSack.
Dude, is that the new Contra? No, Dave, this is the Game Chaser seasons one through four, all on DVD and Blu-ray. You actually own these? I do. Oh my God, you must be proud. Not really. Did you hear they're making a movie? I did. Now, do you think if they make a game based on the movie, they'll make a, it'll be a good game based on a bad movie or a bad game based on a bad movie? <laughs> are you serious? I have absolutely no doubt that's gonna be a bad movie. So are you gonna see it? Yeah. Yeah, me too.